Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to make this inside of Blender. Oh my god. This tunnel never ends. Whoa. There's like a cave in or something. Jesus. goes on forever. Huh. Guys? <coughs> so to make convincing found footage, there are a few steps. We'll be going over how to construct your environments, animate your camera, sound design, record voiceover, and final video effects. By the end of this video, you should all be fully capable of making your own spooky found footage animation. So let's get started. First, I'm gonna teach you how to create the most important part, the camera. So to create the illusion that this is a real camera being held by a real person, we need to do a couple of things. First, we need to add randomly generated noise to the camera, which will give it that iconic shaky effect. Then we'll be adding a flashlight to the camera so wherever the camera looks gets illuminated. And finally, our camera needs to actually move around, so we'll be using paths for it to follow to simulate walking. So before we do any of that, I actually want to go and resize my camera. So to do that, you're going to want to go to output on the right hand side, and right at the top here, you have resolution dimensions. So I set mine to 1920 by 1440, and when you go into camera mode, you can see it gives more of a square resolution, and that matches a lot better with the VHS effect that we're going to be going for. The next thing we need to do with our camera, and which is probably the most important and technical step of the whole process, is we're going to select our camera, and instead of our timeline, we're going to want to go down here and open up the graph editor tab. And then once we see that we're on keyframe one, make sure your camera is selected, press the I key, and hit location, rotation, and scale. This will give a keyframe for all of these different attributes for our camera. And first, I'm going to hit X rotation. Then we're going to want to go over here to the right, hit modifiers, add modifier, and hit noise. And now that we've added that, if you press play, you can see the camera is moving around. And if we go into camera mode here, we can see that it's actually rotating at random speeds and amounts based off of the noise that's being played for our attribute. And if you scroll up a bit, you can see like the noise of what this is actually doing to the camera. And obviously this is way too much. So I would say up your scale um, to about 12, and I usually put my strength down to 0.1. And once we give, you know, some better numbers, you can see that the camera bobs much more gently. So once you have a setting that you like, just go ahead and apply that to all the other rotation attributes as well. And once you have all of your rotation modifiers applied, you'll see that it gives a really nice shaky camera effect. And if you want to make it look like your camera is, you know, bobbing up and down to give the look of walking, go to Z location and add another noise modifier. Doing this will kind of make the camera bob up and down. And obviously, you know, you're going to need to scale it out a bit more than that. But once you do so, it looks like your guy is kind of walking up and down, which is pretty cool. The next thing we'll want to add to our camera is a flashlight. And I built a little scene here so we can test out how the light's going to interact with other objects. So select your camera and press Shift S and then hit cursor to selected. That way when we bring in our spotlight, it'll spawn right next to our camera. So then we'll want to do shift A, go down to light and hit spot. Now um, we're going to want to rotate that so it's facing the right way. So right X 90. Now if we go into rendered mode, well obviously our, our uh, light's a little dim. So we'll put it up to about 300. And now we can see. However, if we, um, if we move our camera around, the light doesn't really follow it, which is not what we want. So exiting our camera, we're going to want to select our light and then select our camera and press Control P and hit Object Keep Transform. Then when we go into our camera mode again and move it around, we see that the light follows it. Perfect. I like to offset my flashlight a little bit just um, from the camera. It makes it look a bit more realistic. So if you put it um, like slightly below the camera, that also helps. And then now we have our little camera flashlight. And this is a personal preference because some flashlights are actually attached to the camera. But if you want your character to be holding a separate flashlight in one hand and the camera in the other, 
You can also add the um, randomly generated noise to the flashlight so that also bobs on its own. I did that in my own clip, but again, it's a personal preference, so you can choose whether to do it or not. Now all we have to do is get our camera to actually move. So what you're going to want to do is press N and then this little menu will pop up and press camera to view. Now when we hit zero on the numpad and go into camera view, we can hold down middle mouse button and actually move the camera around with our mouse. So let's back out of that for a second and zoom out. Now we're going to want to go to our first frame. Now this is our starting frame. However, if we go out to, let's say frame 50, move our camera this way. All you want to do is hit I, then location, rotation, and scale. Now, if we move back, we see that the camera moves. And if we go back to our camera view, looks like we're very shakily walking forward. Now you can do this, you know, much more advanced. You can, uh, if we hit camera view again, you can rotate it like this, move our camera forward, press I, go to another frame, move forward, move to the side, rotate a bit, press I. Now all of a sudden our camera is moving around this corner. So if we, we exit out, look at the camera again, press play. We see that the camera walks around, looks at this bend and turns around. Obviously there's a bit of like a learning curve to getting the camera to move where you want. It really comes down to just getting the hang of it, you know, give it some practice, just move it around, use the camera to view tool to see if everything looks right. And then everything will just fall right into place. And that's about it for our camera tutorial. It only took me about like two minutes to set this whole thing up. So it's really quick, really easy. And now we can move on to the fun part, making the environment. Okay, so now that you know how to set up your camera, let's make an environment to actually put that camera in. To do that and make it simple and easy for all of us who have a bit less time on our hands, we'll be using a combination of Quixel's Megascans library using Bridge and the Blender Kit add-on. Both of those will be linked in the description if you'd like to download them now and follow along. Now I'm going to start creating my environment. A hallway would be the easiest environment to create, so I stretch out default cube and separate my ceiling, walls, and floor by pressing P in edit mode. After some resizing, I cut up my walls to make some extruding passageways. I do this using some loop cuts and then insetting the different faces, extruding them outwards. This makes our one singular hallway a bit more interesting and feel a lot larger than it is. Next, I really want the place to feel dirty, so I duplicate my floor and I subdivide it a bunch to make mud. I do this by giving it a displacement modifier afterwards and applying a clouds texture to give it some random bumps. Going into sculpt mode, I can then pull some parts down and make it look a bit more natural. Using Blender Kit, I find a nice mud material to apply to it. Then I make my own puddle material for our original floor to make it look like dank water filling up the holes in the mud. I connect a Voronoi texture to the normal map and a Musgrave to the Voronoi's vector slot to give the water a ripply texture. Then I import a staircase from Bridge to put at the end of each of my branching off hallways. So then if the camera passes by them, it'll appear that they go somewhere instead of just having a dead end. We'll also add a fog effect later that helps with this. Now it's time to texture the walls. I import a cinder block material from Bridge, but it's gonna take quite a bit of altering. When you have a large complex shape like this and apply a texture to it, you'll most likely have to do some UV work. The reason for this is after all those loop cuts and other alterations we did in edit mode, this one object now is made up of a bunch of different faces that are all different sizes. And the texture doesn't really know how to apply itself equally to all of these different shapes. So we have to go in and manually stretch out the shapes over top of the texture to make it fit. Personally, it's a process I've always hated, but it's really not too bad once you get the hang of it, and it's definitely worth the extra 10 minutes that it takes. You'll also notice that I'm not able to fix these weird trapezoid faces by the doorways, which is a result of my unplanned workflow. Don't worry about this stuff too much though, I just end up going in later and covering up with pillars. It's good to remember that there are always workarounds, so try not to get hung up on one problem. 
After much work in the UV editing tab, I move on to my ceiling. I use a material from Blender Kit and rescale it with a texture node. Hey guys, I'm here to interrupt the video for just a quick second to announce that I've officially made a Patreon page. For $1 a month, you'd be supporting me and I'll give you a mention at the end of my videos. But for $3 or $5 a month, you gain access to the Blender files from my videos, including this one. I know a lot of people have asked over the years for access to my files, and so I figured it was about time I put them up somewhere. Currently, I have my mech kit bash, zombie sculpt, and comic art tutorial available, as well as the file from this video that you're watching right now. Hopefully this proves to be a really useful resource to you guys, and of course it would be a massive support to me too. So if you want a better inside look at how I make things and access to my models, you can use the link in the description to become a member today. Thank you so much, and now, back to the video. Then I add a principled volume to my scene. This adds a fog and really helps add another layer of realism and atmosphere. I turn my density down to around 0.05 and that seems to give a good effect. You might notice that when I import my bridge objects they look a little shiny. I don't know why, but Bridge doesn't really like exporting to Blender. If this happens to you, don't worry, just go into your shader editor and move the node inputs around. I've noticed that it places the roughness and normal textures in the wrong spot and then gives materials a clear coat, so be sure to turn that off as well. I felt my ceiling was looking a bit bare, so I import a table model from Bridge and then turn it upside down. I thought this made an interesting looking decoration, so I duplicate it a few times and then I just spread them across my ceiling. Occasionally I'll flip one to add some variation. Then I'll add in some pipes, using my tables as a sort of industrial support system for all the piping. Once I finish the ceiling, my environment's complete. Now I have about eight more minutes of footage from me setting up and animating my camera, but since I've already showed you how to do that, I'll cut through and further speed up a lot of it to spare your time. After adding the noise to the camera, I parented my flashlight and gave that some noise as well, just to make it feel a bit more handheld and bob along with the camera. I also got to a point where I needed my Z location noise to stop, but you can't keyframe the noise. So instead, I duplicated my camera and deleted that modifier. When the first camera then reaches the point where I want the bobbing to stop, I add a camera marker on the timeline to have the render swap to my new second camera. This sounds super complex, but it's actually quite an easy trick, and once you learn it, it makes you feel super smart. I'll slow down this segment a bit more so you can see how I do it.
And I know this is just a little clip for a tutorial, but I really wanted this footage to have just an extra bit of pizzazz, so I added a monster. I appended my monster model I made a few videos ago, and very roughly animated him to appear behind a box when the camera turns around. It's a very simple element, but I think everything's better with a cool creepy monster. Alright, once we're done all of that, all we have to do now is export our animation. So to do this, go over here to the little printer icon labeled Output, and then you're going to want to scroll down to this little Output section down here. So there's going to be a couple things we need to do here. First, you're going to want to click on this little folder icon, and then just pick a place where you want your file to be exported to. Of course, I already have mine all picked out. Then under File Format, it's going to say PNG. We're gonna to wanna to click on this and change it to AVI JPEG. What this does is it makes it so it renders it as a video and not a single image for every frame. So that's gonna be very important. And before we render, you also wanna make sure, just go over to Render up here, Render Properties, and scroll down and check Motion Blur. And now it's finally time to go up to Render and hit Render Animation. Once you're all done with rendering your animation, it's time to bring it into your editing software. For today's project, I'm going to use Premiere Pro, just because I found it to be the best place to replicate that old video look. Don't worry though if this software isn't available to you. You can recreate this effect in other free programs like DaVinci Resolve, which is very, very good. Now, to get my animation to look like this old VHS footage, I followed Tyler White's VHS camcorder effect tutorial. It's a very well-made video, and I don't want to steal any of his thunder, so please use the link in the description to go watch how to do this. Once you're done, come back and we can finish out the rest of the video. So I already have the preset made, so I'm just going to apply it to my footage and instantly you can see how much better it looks. The great thing about this effect is not only does it make it feel creepier and more analog, but by hiding it under the imperfections and poor quality of old cameras, it also covers up the fact that our footage is totally fake. So now that we have our visuals, the final piece we need is the audio. I love using YouTube's audio library for my sound effects. It's a really great free resource, it's trustworthy, and it's got a pretty decent catalog. We can get sounds like footsteps and ambient noise from the library, but to make it really believable, we need sounds from our cameraman. This is where we get to have some fun. For this step, I'm going to break out my trusty Blue Yeti microphone and open up Audacity. Link to download that program will be in the description, of course. I record myself very close to the microphone until I get a nice breathy effect. Maybe throw in a few grunts and a what the for when our character turns around. Once we do that, we need our audio to match the quality of our camera. Pure garbage. To do this, we're going to take all of our sounds, drag them into Audacity, and go up here to Effects. Then we're going to pick Filter Curve EQ. From there, you're going to want to go up to the top and open the Presets menu and find AM Radio. Then just drag some of these points on the left side down to the bottom. This is going to take our voice from sounding like this to sounding like this. And as a final touch, I also decided to shake my microphone around a little bit to create this sort of shaky camera sound and further sell the amateur filming vibe. Then I'll just place all of my sounds into Premiere and render it out. And after all of our hard work, this is the final result. Oh my god. This tunnel never ends. Whoa. There's like a cave-in or something. Jesus. goes on forever. Oh. Oh. Guys? <laughs> Thank you so much to all of you who've stuck around to the end. I really hope you chose to follow along and attempt to make your own found footage animation. Making these is a lot of fun, and I encourage you all to give it a shot. And remember, all of the files and work I've made in this video are up right now on my Patreon for those of you who want a more in-depth look at how I made things. That includes the Blender file, the Premiere file, and all of the audio and anything else that I made. So not only do you get access to all of that and more, but you also get to support me, which I would very much appreciate. If you have any other videos you'd like me to make next, please leave a comment. I'd love to read it, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye